chatted with Gifty Boache, fashion model and beauty queen. She recently made Ghana proud on the world stage at the Miss Supranational Beauty Contest in Poland. There's more about this beautiful damsel that we are yet to find out. This is Talk Attainment on Ghana Web TV. I am Paula Amabroni. We'll be right back. Welcome back. You're watching Talk Entertainment on Ghana Web TV. Give team watching. Yes, Miss I finally Paula. have you. You know, I've been chasing you for Ghana. I'm so <laughs> excited to be here. I'm like, I'm it's finally in the flesh. I'm excited. It's good to also have you here. Thank you. And I see all the things displayed. Yes. Then Miss Supernatural Influencer 2022, yep. and then Miss Supernatural Ghana. Yeah. It's a whole lot going on there. A whole lot. I know you've been chasing the crown for long, but why would we say that when it comes to beauty pageant, mm -hmm. it looks like women who got the heart to wear the crown and embark on such projects. It looks like it's addictive. Can one ever stop chasing the crown? The thing about pageantry is it's something that you're born with as far as loving, right? And mm. you realize there's different steps you have to take to get to the crown. So I wouldn't even consider it chasing. It's more so something that's already there for you, for you to go and get. I think that um, to be a pageant queen, to be a beauty queen in general, takes a lot of uh, encouragement and a lot of strength and perseverance mm -hmm. because there's so many other women that want that same crown. Um, I wouldn't consider myself someone that chased the crown. I think that um, it was a purpose that was put on me and, and obviously in the past few years we've done what needed to be done to get there. And so I'm just, I'm glad to represent and wear the sash in honor of my country. Great. But then I've seen, well, I, 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 I've, I was there before with this mm -hmm. whole pageantry thing. Mm -hmm. I tried Miss Ghana. And when okay. my house was really broken, I was like, this is it, I'm done. Yeah. But we've seen some ladies. Maybe they try um, Miss Malaika, it doesn't work. Yeah. They go to Miss Universe, Ghana's most beautiful. It goes on and mm -hmm. on and on. Sometimes when you see their faces, people wonder, why are you so much into doing mm -hmm. this? Can't you try something else? Mm -hmm. For women who are you said it's not chasing, they've got a dream, yeah. they want to, uh, to embark on a project. For mm -hmm. men who find themselves in that way, what, what would you say could be the motivation? Because they never stop. They never stop after lots and lots of disappointment for some, right? Even okay. myself, I've been through that process where it's like you feel like you deserve something, you feel like you deserve the crown and... Um, and you obviously work for it and you, you mm -hmm. don't get it. It happens. There's only one crown and so many women um, reaching for it. So for that person, that woman that has been striving in all the different beauty pageants that we have here in Ghana um, and hasn't had any success, I would say it's obviously on your heart for a reason. Mm -hmm. um, and keep going until you can't anymore. There are certain, obviously, uh, requirements and limitations as far as age and things like that so if you've continued and continued on and you age out then you know you've given it your all but um, I, I encourage excuse me especially the younger girls to start early learn from whatever they did the year that it did not work out for them okay ask a lot of questions mm -hmm. get a pageant coach uh, pray a lot because <laughs> you're gonna need it to continue to build your confidence because it's not easy you did miss Ghana so you know you I was so disappointed. You did it, wait, you I, I did was it like, one this, time. This is for me. Mm -hmm. And then I went, I was so disappointed. I was like, uh uh, this heartbreak, I can't. Yeah. That's what I'm going to do. Did you place? So I made it through the original stages. Okay, which is big, which is also a big. And I think women forget that. In pageantry, it's always it's not always about the crown it's about the process mm -hmm. it's about who you meet on that journey okay. it's about con connections and, and introductions that are made throughout the process i know for me in poland um i feel like i came obviously lolly won the overall miss supranational crown but i also feel like i won one seeing my sister a fellow black woman she was the first black woman to be crowned miss supra that's us winning right yeah. me meeting people throughout that whole process and polling, representing Ghana, having people want to come to Ghana and meet all the people here and, and be introduced and me being an ambassador for the country is winning. It's winning. So you should understand it on that level. It's yeah. not always about the it's crown. It's not. It's not. And I'm going to be very honest with you. You know me, Paula. I'm very real. There are, I've seen queens in the past from all um, pageants, the big five, Miss World, Miss Universe. The queen, the winner herself, in my opinion, has done less than some of the women that have went through the pageant. Like, it's it's very much how you take the journey and what you do with it. Mm -hmm. When you look at it like that, it's not as painful. You understand? It's I not get it. It's not as painful as, you know, I didn't get the crown, my life is over. No. 
great. It's the impact. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that too. Yeah. Now, walk us through memory lane from your very first to the current beauty pageant, if you can remember. Oh, my favorite. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when did so, that start, like? so, a little bit of background. I mm -hmm. started as a model. Modeling um, has been my profession for about 14 years. Oh, great. I started when I was just 15. Mm -hmm. um, and in Ghana? In New York. In New York, in New York. yes. Yeah. So, um, we left Ghana when I was like maybe five, four or five. And so I went did my schooling in the States. And then right after high school, I decided, New York, here I come. So um, modeling and pageantry were, are very much like oil and water. Pageants look at models and they're like, they're boring, they're straight. Uh, models look at pageants like they're superficial, they're, you know, robots, whatever. So when I transitioned and decided to do both, my first pageant was um, Miss Virginia. Oh, for okay. to go for Miss USA and then further Miss Universe. So that was my first pageant. Girl, I did not know anything did you about have a coach pageantry. At that time? I didn't have a coach. I didn't even know you needed a coach. All I knew was that I wanted to try this thing, right? Mm -hmm. I had just, I think, finished my first uh, degree. So I was, I was like 21 or 22. And at this point, I'm back, coming back and forth between Ghana and the States. Mm -hmm. And... I was like the only black woman that made it into top 12 for Miss Virginia that year. And I can remember feeling so out of place, feeling so defeated, feeling like I didn't belong. Um, and I just felt like, that's it. You know, when, when I didn't get further than that, top 12, I was like, I wanted the crown, that same mindset. The feeling. Mm -hmm. And then I took a break. I was like, yeah, back to modeling. I took myself right back on the runway and did what, what made me feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. But there's Jane danger in comfortability, right? Because if I had given up there, I wouldn't be sitting here with you today with these sashes on my exactly. chest. And so I went back into Miss Universe, Ghana. Um, and that was a great experience. That was my first pageant in Ghana. In Ghana. Yes. And so I was Miss Upper West. And I learned so much about the Upper West. I'm also actually from the eastern region so I'm from Akutia so I was so I was like where's my eastern region sash they were like no they appoint you a sash you learn about the region you know which was educational for me so was it a challenge yeah it was a big it was very much so a challenge I was living with um, 16 women so we had, I advanced to top 16 uh, which was a big deal very and so at deal. this point very right <laughs> yeah it Ghana. is yeah. very right so we we're all lodging at, um, in Ouija at Eden Heights. Um, and so that was my first time living with so many women competing. <laughs> for the crown. Competing for the crown, right? But in that moment, I realized and learned, like, there's a sisterhood here. If you go into it thinking, like, this girl's my co competition, I'm not going to laugh with her, I'm not going to spoil you'll be miserable that entire, we were there for six weeks six long weeks and I built some of the most beautiful friendships in that process um, when the final finale came uh, we placed top five Ooh. and yeah and so we got to the point where it was time to answer questions which I was very excited about because I'm very passionate about you know sustainability I'm studying to get my master's now in inter international development so um, it's funny Kafui was the presenter and he asked me we know you love Buffro. <laughs> Like, and he asked me, can, can you imagine? He <laughs> asked me, that was my, my question to get into top eight. And he asked me, like, what's the process of making buffer? And I said something witty. Um, um, but, yeah, Miss Universe happened. That was a life lesson for me. That was in 20, that was last year. That was last year. Last year, 2021. Mm -hmm. That was 2021, yeah. yes. So um, I was living in Ghana at the time, and... And that was a very interesting experience. Um, there was a lot of noise and backlash after the finale. And because I had the mindset, if it was the 21 year old me, I would have been down and I would have maybe fed into some of, you know, the articles and, you know, the drama. Well, well can thing. you tell us about the drama? You there was about? just, you know, some people felt like the placements were not accurate. Some people felt like, and if you watched the, um, process of Miss Universe Ghana, it was filmed every week on Joy Prime, every mm -hmm. Sunday it would come on, people could vote and things like that. So they were watching the progress of the queens. They saw all of our challenges. 
they saw, you know, all of that. And so some people were upset, some people had questions, but I went on my platforms, all of them, and let them know, like, you guys, the winner has been crowned. She's an amazing woman. She's going to make Ghana so proud. Um, this, this December, I believe, is when they are, are gonna go. Mm -hmm. And I'm happy for her. There's no need for anyone to throw shade at anybody in the organization, especially if I'm not throwing shade. Like, what? Let's, let's. It always comes. Like, mm -hmm. sometimes in a competition, people assume that when you enter into a beauty pageant, mm -hmm. they already have the winner. Yes, that's a very, it, that's a very it's common. It's something that happens because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. before the, the, the day of the crown, and you even have people saying, okay, we're tipping this person because maybe it's, it's related to a big person. It always happens. That's why sometimes some girls don't even want to bother yeah. going through the stress because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, if you know who you are crowning, why, why call all the girls For to come? Sure. Yeah, but that's that's something that we are going to t talk more about later in the conversation. Okay. But on the world stage, what was your best moment? I know you did the gown, the mm -hmm. bikini, <laughs> then, then the traditional, the country yeah. where you were. Mm -hmm. What was your favorite moment? My favorite moment was when I did my introduction. Okay. So at the finals you walk up and they announce your first and last name and the country that you represent. And if you watch the clips, I have so much energy, you know, when I'm saying Ghana, I'm just like, <laughs> wow. Like I'm, you know, I'm this on it. this international stage with 70 other brilliant, beautiful women. And I'm the one that's representing all of Ghana, me. Like there was so much power in that moment. I obviously had so much fun with the swimwear. There's a scene where I'm like pointing at the camera, pointing at all of you guys at home. Um, the, the viewers loved that. But I think that moment when they announced me, my name and the country was very powerful for me. And top 24. And top 24. Charlie. That was sis. <laughs> That was a highlight. Cause we're all hoping we were places. Cause I was watching, they'll do top this, top that. And when yeah. you got to the top, I was like, yeah, my girl is yeah. in there. Oh no, yeah. we we. Um, we went and we worked hard. The thing about Ghana is we have, we're not seen as like a powerhouse country when it comes to mm -hmm. pageantry. So we're kind of overlooked mm -hmm. and that's just the honest truth. Yeah. My mission was to go in there and make them see us. Um, all in being myself and everything that I am that comes from, from Ghana, right? So right. when they called um, my name and they called Ghana for Top 24, I like said thank you to God and I went up there and I smiled and I was like, we did it. To me, that was, it was win the equivalent of winning because we made history. Exactly. We, we pushed open a door for future, pa future pageant queens to come. What more can you ask for? We're proud of you. Thank you. We're proud of you. Then back to this, you make mention of the fact that Ghana is not like one of the biggest when it comes to yeah. uh, the countries that produces the beauty queens. Mm -hmm. What do you think have contributed to the Philippines being known as the powerhouse of beauty pageants? And when you come to Africa, mm -hmm. South Africa, Nigeria, and Egypt, what do you think they are doing right? Okay, so again, Paula, you know I'm very real. And I think that one thing that countries like the Philippines, Thailand, South Africa are doing is they're collectively pushing their queens. There's no obvious separation from the girl who wins Miss Intercontinental South Africa, Miss Supranational South Africa, Miss Universe South Africa. Whoever wears the sash with that country's name on it, they make sure to push that girl when it comes to social media, when it comes to media, interviews. There's no award shows. Like they are, they're honored and celebrated everywhere. When you have that backing behind you, there's a certain confidence that you walk into a room like, yes, I'm here representing my country. And I think that Ghanaians, we can do better um, with, we're, we, we are doing better, but there's, more to, there's more to do as far as collectively pushing That's our me. queen. We have Miss Grand International, which is just next month. Um, and she just got crowned about, while I was actually, I think while I was in Poland, she was crowned like a few days after that. It's now time for the same people that rallied around me when we were representing at Supra to rally around her. When Ingracia goes to Miss Universe in December, we all need to rally around her collectively so that we're a force. We're a force in numbers. If it's just your organization and, and your national director struggling to get you an interview and struggling to get you um, access, you know, VIP access to the airport when, when it's easily done by another national director, 
that is a big competition. It's you cannot match up you to can't, that. The only people we're supposed to be competing against are the other countries, not, not within our own yeah. country. I get that. And so I think if we if we can do that, there's a crown right there. We are on the brink of of bringing a crown home. So I can we feel just it. need the support. We need the support. Great. On the back of Gifty calling for support for our beauty queens, we'll take a quick break. When we come back, talk entertainment continues. <laughs> Welcome back. I'm seated with Gifty Boache, Miss Supranational Ghana 2022. She also made Ghana proud recently in Poland when she placed top 24 at the Miss Supernatural Beauty Contest in Poland. Yes, yeah, I already stated. Now, Gifty, yes. we've heard a lot about beauty queens. Mm -hmm. Pimping. Pimping. Mm -hmm. It comes up yearly. Is it a myth or a reality? It is... <laughs> don't, don't say you're choosing your words carefully. But, uh, no, Let us know, you know what's, gonna, in, uh, what's you know happening in there. I'll give it to you straight. No uh -huh. chaser. For me, it is a myth. It's a myth. For me. For you. Okay. In past scenarios, things that I've read, conversations that I've had, it's been a reality for some women. And it has to stop. I think that we are beauty queens, yes, but we're very intelligent women from the queens that I've encountered. And we shouldn't, our minds shouldn't be neglected and we shouldn't be put in a position where we have to compromise our integrity to wear a crown. And I, I'd, I would encourage any woman, any queen here in Ghana or around the world that is ever put in that position to stand your ground, there will be more opportunities for you. Do not, do not jeopardize your integrity in that way as far as being pimped out or any of those situations. It's, it's really not worth it. And in the end, whatever is done in the dark always comes to light. So it hasn't been a reality for me. Um, my Miss Universe Ghana experience, my Miss Supernational experience, I didn't experience anything like that. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm thankful for that. But I do know that it's real and it happens. And not just in pageantry, but as women in Everywhere. any field. <laughs> in any you. field, you understand. Yeah. And you know, there's women that have to feed their families. There's women that have to be the breadwinners and some of them feel like they don't have a choice. Mm. And I think that um, go into any situation understanding that that may be the case, but you always have an option. Great, thank you. Thank you for that advice. Now back to modeling. What has been your biggest gig? Oh my gosh. Like the biggest, so I don't know many. if it's a fashion show, working with a brand, what has it My been? biggest gigs would be the fashion weeks. So Paris Fashion Week, London Fashion Week, and oh, New York, okay. New York Fashion Week every season since 2011. Ooh. And I think I've done Miami Swim Week, which I think is my favorite because I love swimwear, I love bikinis. So no, you got it. the budget. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, those have been, so I've walked for like Michael Kors, uh, Jimmy Choo, BB, Montclair, um, Vivian Hugh, some of you no, know the bigger brands. On on. Yeah. What's up with the Nike thing that I Nike, showed? yes, we just, we just did um, a Nike shoot. A Nike campaign for their newest Air Force One sneaker mm -hmm. in celebration of their 40th years. And the shoe is actually inspired by Ghana. It's called the Little Accra Shoe, which is the first shoe that Nike's ever done for Ghana, in representation of Ghana. And we did that like about a week and a half ago and did the launch party, which has been huge. Um, so yeah, we add Nike to the list as well and um, makeup brands, Ulta, Sephora, Morphe, you could name it. Yeah. I'm You're a big thankful. girl, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> I'm thankful. Yeah. So I want to ask you, Gifty, are you open for a nude commercial? A nude photo shoot? Would you ever consider that? Or have you done that? I've never done fully nude. Fully nude. Um, I have done topless. Okay. And that was for a shoe campaign. So mm -hmm. um, you could not see any of my goodies. Yeah. Um, that is a stipulation for me since, I mean, I'm, I'm still a Ghanaian woman. I still you have know, mommy and daddy at home, you know, at you. looking at me. Um, but anyone that does do nude, I, that's your prerogative. Mm -hmm. I just don't. 
Um, I the closest you'll get is probably like swimwear, and people see my swimwear shoots and my swimwear uh, shows on the runway, and they're like, "Oh my God!" So it's to, it's to each his own. You understand? Um, the biggest thing that I think I would probably have gotten nude for was Victoria's Secret. You attempted. Yeah. yeah, that's like my dream. That was like my <laughs> dream. Oh my gosh, Victoria's Secret was like my dream. Um, or like Stuart Wiseman, who's like a very big uh, shoe designer. He mm. has the thigh high boots and Miranda Kerr's like topless. Maybe that, but Maybe other that. than that. No. Okay, mm -mm. I see, I see. But in, I know you love to tour the world. You've been to a lot of countries. Mm -hmm. How many countries have you done so far? I have oof, maybe around the world, maybe 45, 45 countries. Okay. Uh, in um, Africa, how many African countries have you done? Ooh, have, let's count. You've uh, lost count. I've lost count. I've done most of West Africa. I've actually never been to Nigeria, which is interesting. Oh. Yeah. It, every time my flight is, I'm ready to go. I was supposed to go for a rise fashion week with my my Tafu, who makes all of my run my red carpet gowns. Oh, okay. um, something happens, but. Um, I've done a lot of East Africa, Morocco, Ghana, Togo, Cote d'Ivoire, Tanzania, mm. Kenya. The list goes on. The list on. goes on. Oh, wait, I'm missing some. I'm missing a few. Maybe you'll come. Egypt. Up. Egypt. Oh, Ethiopia. Egypt. Rwanda? Yeah. Never done Rwanda. Oh, okay. Never done Rwanda. Um, I will be doing Zambia soon. Miss, me and Zambia are going to do some. I see. Some girls trips <laughs> and fun. um yeah, okay. I'm excited. All right. Now the big question, are you still an Arsenal fan? Oh god. <laughs> yeah, I'll put you on the spot. <laughs> you know how we're doing. So what I said I was gonna have gift table popping up about oh Paula, that you should throw funny. that one question in there. You see I asked you before we started. Yeah. Am I an Arsenal fan? Yeah. Arsenal's still a, Arsenal's a great team. Okay. Arsenal's a great team. Okay. That's yeah. your answer. Yeah. Wait. But uh, you have a lot of fans here in mm -hmm. Ghana, worldwide. Yes. And one thing that we're really rooting for was your relationship with our Ghanaian footballer, Black Stars player, mm -hmm. Thomas Partey. It was something that we were all rooting for. Then we just saw in the news that that ship had sunk. Mm -hmm. What happened? It was something, I was also rooting for it. I just don't know why. <laughs> if you just love to share Paula. something, something small. What are you asking? You're asking me what How happened? How did that ship sink? Like, uh, we didn't see it coming. Um, so I'm going to be very frank. Okay. And, and Paula, you're my girl, so I'm going to yeah. entertain this conversation because <laughs> for years, okay. I try to keep my personal life out oh. of my interviews. Um, Thomas and I's relationship was very public and against my wishes. I wish that, you know, it started with that whole AFCON scandal which is just the worst, you know, way to... So with that scandal, before you even go ahead, mm -hmm. was it through that uh, you, you came into the dress and then because your presence caused chaos? It's a whole love story. So if you want to just debunk that rumor... Yeah, that really was very happened. much a rumor. I, I don't have the time to sneak or be smuggled into any camp. That's not something that I would ever do for anyone. Um, I was invited there and everyone knew I was there. There were no issues with me being there. It was his birthday. And um, that was why I was there. So some uh, journalist decided to take it upon himself to write those rumors about me when I was in Dubai at the camp and in um, Egypt at the actual uh, games. But those were rumors that um, we kind of put an end to when we got back to Ghana because it was very much like, who's the secret lady that you know we, we were dating? very much in, in a committed, monogamous relationship. I would not be smuggled anywhere. Um, so those were rumors, yes. And as far as the way the ship, why do you guys say the ship the sucks? The ship. People <laughs> the break up, it's okay. I think it took so much time for, you know, obviously him um, and myself to kind of separate ourselves from that, the Ghanaian perception of our relationship. Because there were so many people that were in the relationship with us. like, And so when we broke up, we kept it a secret for some time. And I think that um, when I had decided to move on, again, out of respect for my partner, I kept everything very low-key. Mm -hmm. I don't think that you need to flaunt the person that you are with after the pre pre previous relationship. Cause 
you still you you loved this person at some point you thought that you know that and at this even today with everything that's going on in the media with him i pray for him daily and i you know we're we're good so should we expect a reunion is there any way that you can rekindle <laughs> things because Paula. we don't want our boy to be you know this girl is to play him around. We just want him to play football. I said that because that that big everyone was wondering why would that Moroccan girl put a whatever it is, whether it's an allegation or whatever. Mm. We're not going to talk about it. But yeah. it was a heartbreak for us here. You know, Ghana, we love our own. So if yeah. anytime someone finds themselves in trouble, we're going to go like, uh, what's happening? Uh, so mm -hmm. how do you, you said you prayed for him? Or, you know, constantly. Oh, constantly. Um, we come from the same home. Him, he's a Krobo. I'm a Krobo as well. Yeah. You know and. I don't ever want to see a black man, whether Ghanaian, whether American, whether British, whatever, in that position, in that situation. Um, no matter what our differences were, um, I think that mm -hmm. prayer is key in that kind of situation okay. <laughs> because it's not a good situation. You know what I mean? Um, I do think that we all have to take our actions you take accountability for our own actions. And as much as everyone is praying for you, you have to pray for yourself. And as much as everyone is hoping that you make the right decisions, you have to make the right decisions for Great. yourself. And so, um, he'll be fine. He'll be fine. He'll be fine. So and should we expect to come back? All you guys have just said, it's a no, no, you guys are done with that faith. <laughs> give tea, give tea. Oh my God! We love the gist. <laughs> I yeah. see. We love the gist. <laughs> so yes, Paula, Miss Supernatural and, and Miss Ghana. Okay, that's good. But uh, you made a point where you said you didn't really love your relationship to be out there. So in your next relationship, are you considering something private away oh, from social media? When I tell you, <laughs> privacy is key. Um, it got to the point where even to this day. Mm -hmm. I will go on social media, I'll go on Instagram live and people will be asking about questions about things that like I have moved away from. You yeah, I, I know. Personally, I also don't love to visit things that are in the past, but of course we just yeah. wanted to. But it, it happens and, that's, yeah. and you have to understand when you're public figures, you have to understand that that's going to happen. So I'm, I'm okay with that. Um, it's just the uh, way people go about it. You understand? It's. You see, we started this conversation discussing my accomplishments, my accolades. There's people that will look past all of that Gifty B is. And I built my brand from the ground up before my relationship with him. You did. You did. And yeah. so I think that it's important for people to understand that Gifty B was Gifty B before. Big gift. She's still Big Gift now. And she's going to be Big Gifts in the future, whether she marries whoever she marries, whether she marries your favorite people, whether she marries someone else. At the end of the day, um, Big gift is big gift, and I want to keep that separate. So my relationship status is very private now. Period. <laughs> oh, great. Now, I know Afrochella, you're yes. part of the organization. Mm -hmm. This year is going to be big, it's right? It's going to be I huge. I saw the YouTube Jollof thing that mm -hmm. happened. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. And the one thing that people really commended you guys for was the recent saga that happened. Of yes. course, the fact that you took responsibility, and mm -hmm. then you said you're investigating the matter. So mm -hmm. we're hoping it's, it's going to happen. Afrochella is a big gift. Yeah. So, like, yeah. Yeah. Afrochella, we are five years old now. Yeah. Uh, we have so many great things in store for you all. And unfortunately, um, because of things that happened last week, um, we took full responsibility for the situation. And we just hope that we can all move forward from, you know, the mistakes that have been made on, you know, members of my team. And I know that, you know, people make mistakes, exactly. such as life. And any person that, you know, was affected by the news or anything that had come out, we apologize. Uh, we don't want to steer people away from coming to celebrate, no. you know, the culture. I think Afrochel, we've done a great job at making sure that people know, you know, Ghana, all that Ghana has to offer as far as food, music, fashion, and culture. And I don't think that that should stop, and no. it won't stop. We have we have so many, we have two days this year, so the 28th and Ooh. 29th of December, <laughs> it's gonna and be it's fun. gonna be a lot of fun. Yeah. December in Ghana is, is always fun. Always fun. a vibe. Now Ghana has become that destination in Africa when 100%. like in December. Mm -hmm. Great, great. Now before we wrap up, 
what project are you working on? What do you want to tell us? Is there anything we need yes, to know? Yes, of course. So, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, obviously, um, I'll be passing the crown to the next Miss Super National Ghana. Um, she'll go and represent. So you guys can look out for that. Um, I have my store native. We're actually four years old now. I bought you a gift. Oh, boy. Yeah, so um, <laughs> I bought you, you a cute gift from native. But we are looking to expand. Um, so we'll be doing a job fair to be hiring uh, women, young women and men, um, preferably the youth. Uh, to get into the sales and the e-commerce business here for natives. So look out for that. And, and I know Sister Slay too. Sister Slay, yes, is my nonprofit. So we do our Girl Boss Brunch every December at the Villaggio. So that will be happy. I'd love to have you as one of our speakers, Miss Paula. Yeah, you know, we, we yeah, love to celebrate boss women and um, strong women that have been through things and can stand uh, and tell their testimony. So we have that going on. So all, all of that, hopefully there'll, there'll be some wedding though oh okay soon on your path okay okay i love that congratulations i didn't say anybody's part <laughs> i said wedding bell soon on some on your part maybe on your part look at your part please you better part. invite me to your wedding i will definitely when the time comes oh most definitely okay it was nice having you gifted. Thank you for having you're me. A, you are doing amazing i love that you're changing the narrative you're selling ghana to the world yeah. And what you did for us on the World Stage too, we're so proud of you. Thank Continue you. doing the good work and all the support you need to, we'll be here to offer you. Thank you so much, Paula. Great. So I did this with Gifty Bwachi. She is a fashion model and a beauty queen. I am Paula Amabuni. Thanks for watching.